Hey everybody. There. Hey everybody. <laughs> Sorry, just uh somebody's at the door upstairs, so apologies if it's any background noise. Anyway, you guys have been looking for this for a long time. Hope this looks like the sound is working perfectly, so let's jump in and look at Theta. This is one that I've been asked to review for weeks now. So here we go. Let's talk about Theta. Math, money, freedom, you guys know the drill. And of course, this is not investment advice. You guys know by now my token analysis framework where we look at everything and we look at it very quickly. So you guys are so versed in it now, we'll just jump right in. So first of all, what does it do? And why is it interesting? So the Theta Network, basically, it's a blockchain focused on delivering video streaming in a decentralized way. Remember those words, very important. And uh, it's designed to reduce the cost of content delivery. And it has a mesh network of shared content where nodes get paid for caching content and making it available, which is pretty cool. Now, let's talk a little bit about the team and the background. Um, the founders are Mitchell Liu and Jay Long, and uh, they've got a lot of experience in gaming, virtual reality, large-scale distributed systems. I mean, truly the A-team here. And they founded Theta Labs first, right before they launched Theta. And the vision was to design a delivery network in a more efficient, cost-effective, and fair manner. Very important to recognize the term fair there as well as we go forward. So where does it rank? Uh, we look at some of the other companies that are in the space, but you can see very clearly that Theta is the clear leader. They are ranked number 23 currently on the coin market cap. And there's other very small players way, way down the list. But Theta, again, is the clear 800-pound gorilla in the space with nearly a $7 billion market cap. We'll talk more about that later when we get to the price predictions, which is what you all want to hear. And the conclusion, would I buy it or have I bought it? Very interesting. So how do they do this? So Theta, basically, they are disrupting the video streaming industry. Think Netflix, think Prime Video, think YouTube, etc., and instead of relying on a centralized service to keep video content out to customers, they find a way to cut out the middleman and let content creators deliver the content directly to viewers through decentralized network. And then node operators can be anybody uh, are incentivized to cache and share content, basically push it out through that mesh system we mentioned before. So that is basically what it is. So you'll see the term called CDN. It's a content delivery network, and that's basically what this is. Now, in terms of industry stats, how big is this space? Well, 82% of all internet protocol traffic is video. So it is massive, and it's growing at a 24% compound annual growth rate per year, which is huge. But just think about that. 82% of all bandwidth is video, like what you're watching here right now. So this one is kind of near and dear to my heart as well. Now, the value proposition, uh, the problem statement, first of all, content creators rely on a centralized streaming system. We've seen lately a lot of people, you know, get pulled off YouTube networks because of censorship and other matters. And also sometimes with some networks, not saying Google or YouTube, but if there's too many users, the stream can become choppy and slow. So it's not perfect all around the world. And ensuring a smooth stream can be expensive. So how can you overcome that? And this is what these guys have actually figured out how they do it and how they build a network where they incentivize people to support it as well. So basically, it the Theta is using a blockchain to disrupt the traditional content delivery model, the CDM as they call it, with this peer-to-peer -peer mesh network. The incentives basically drive nodes to stream content at higher quality and lower prices than using traditional systems. And additionally, Theta can deliver content more efficiently to certain users who are closer to the nodes where the content is cached. Think about the proximity of exactly where the content is and the closer the node is, the easier it is to push it rather than sending something halfway across the globe. Now, the Theta network also can be used alongside traditional services, when this way it kind of improves the plumbing and lowering of costs of streaming content. And you'll notice as well that a lot of the partners are already involved in this business, but we'll get to that in a second. So a little bit about what this all looks like. You have the CDN, as I mentioned, Content Delivery Network, connected to things like POPs, and this is point of presence servers. 
And you can see the hybrid solution on the right is kind of what Theta want to do versus the traditional solution on the left and how it can work together. Now, this is uh, very, very important as we go forward, especially when it comes to being geographically dispersed and closer to others. So if there are a centralized network that pushes content in a certain country, they can use this tool to reach far-flung places all over the world. So it's pretty neat, and there's tons and tons of uses for it. Now, the technology and developers, um, obviously having a centralized, a decentralized network of nodes to cache content and relay streams to the user can revolutionize the delivery of everything, not just video, but any type of content. And content creators also can directly push their stream of content into the network using either influencers or however they want to do that too. So there's a whole bunch of different varieties and how this can be utilized going forward. Now, one of the most important things we always look at is tokenomics. The tokenomics here, uh, Theta has a dual token model, basically the Theta token, which is the one we're primarily looking at today, but we'll talk a little bit about Theta Fuel. There's a billion in circulation and users are allowed to vote on protocol decisions, upgrades, etc. And they can be used for staking, they can be used for validators, and Guardian nodes rely on Theta tokens for staking to secure the proof of stake protocol. Now, the Theta Fuel is the inflationary token, 5% per year, and this is basically transaction fees and staking rewards as well. We'll go a little bit deeper into that in a little while. So, let's talk a little bit about the other part of Theta. It is the token that most people are familiar with, but it's the Theta Fuel, T Fuel that's actually driving the network and the incentives for node operators, stakers, and participants. Now, the big issue here, one of the risks we'll cover later, is if T-Fuel dries up, this could really hurt Theta down the line. So we'll dig into that as well. Now, in terms of tokenomics, a little bit of scary piece here is you will see that they did not have a public sale and very little Theta is actually in the hands of the public. In fact, 87.5% is in the hands of insiders if we take out the network seeding. Now, on a positive note, there's always a double-edged sword here, the vesting is complete and there's no inflation because all the tokens are out on the market, which is good. So a little digger, deeper dive into tokenomics, and sorry to kick this horse, um, but basically the validator centralization is a big issue for this. As you guys know, we like things that are decentralized as much as possible. We also like it when there is an equal distribution of tokens, not, not all in the hands of the investors and the founders, etc. That's not the case here. Now, there are 10 million Theta that are required to be a validator. It's also very important. And that's a lot for an individual. If it's, you know, the current price is $7 per token right now. So you need $70 million to be a validator on the network. And you'll also see that the validators that are there tend to be big names. For example, Google, they run a validator node and the rest of the companies there like Samsung, Sony, you can see they're all media companies. So it's not like a Bitcoin that's completely decentralized and independent. It's very, very different. Now, in terms of the ecosystem, you'll see here, partnerships, Google, Samsung, Sony, Binance, very big name partners, but they are in it because they want to control it. Very important to understand. They're also well-funded by some of the biggest VCs. They raised over 100 million bucks from Sierra Ventures, Heuristic Capital, and a few others. So that's that piece. Now, in terms of growth and longevity, they've been around since 2017. Their main network was launched in March 2019, so they have you know three years under their belt, which is great, and they've raised over 120 million dollars. So, again, stood the test of time, thumbs up there. Now, in terms of risks, very, very, very important. So, the initial tokenomics looks good, but once you dig into it, not that good. Basically, much of the supply is in the hands of Theta Labs and insiders, and the T Fuel is the core token driving the incentives for the network but it dampens the utility case for Theta. So the question is, what do you buy? Do you buy T-Fuel or do you buy Theta? And the validator centralization is also a problem. And the heavy cost and also the only, only the way you can support a number of validators because the threshold is so high to get in really puts into question, is it a truly a decentralized network? And the answer is no, we don't think so.
So let's look at the analyst price predictions. This is a piece you guys love and are most excited about. So I pulled in all the top analysts that had price prediction models for Theta. And they include names like Trading Beasts, Wallet Investor, Coin Price Prediction, Long Forecast, Coin Cora, and Crypto News. Some of the um, some of the price predictions that they put together looked a little bit uh, how do I say back of a napkiny, and others were kind of good and conservative. So Trading Beasts were hyper conservative, which uh, you know. The last couple of times I've done this, Trading Beasts have actually been more conservative than me. Uh, Wallet Investor, $10, all the way up to $105 in 2025. So for some reason, they expect this thing to blow over the next five years, which is great. Coin price um, forecast, again, conservative 2021, considering they were at $14, $15, $16 a few weeks ago, and up to $20 in 2025. And the price stays flat after that. I couldn't figure out why that was. Basically, zero growth after 2026. And maybe that's because of increased competition. And then long forecast, again, really weird pricing. You know, $8 to $15, down to $8, back to $23. I don't know. And CoinCora, $10, $20, $35, $50, $100, seemed very random. Crypto News, very similar. So... The average of all of those is there. Do with it as you please. I didn't really, I wasn't in a position to make any sense of exactly where people were going with that. So as usual, I put together my own price prediction model. And um, Now, first of all, before we jump into mine, I want to have a quick look at the chart and remind you all where we came from so far this year. This is the year-to-date chart. I put two lines on it. It's the 50-day and 200-day moving average. And remember, when the blue line crosses the red, and that's our famous death cross, but we know it's all, it doesn't really matter that much. In fact, you can see the death cross means the price bounced. So uh, interesting there to look at. Now, if we look at the all-time high as well, you can see it was up near 16 bucks back a couple of months ago. And I believe we could very easily go back to that level. But let's look at my pricing. And my pricing is basically based on fundamental value analysis. I looked at historical valuations of things like YouTube, um, pre-acquisition and post-acquisition today. I looked at the user base, etc. cetera. Um, I also looked at the growth rate for the streaming industry, the Kager, which is not 24%, but 21%, and wove that into my pricing model. And, um, and I realized that the all-time high was $16 a few weeks ago. And in this crazy market, we could easily bounce back to that. But again, I like to be very conservative and pick a conservative price. So the 2021 target that I have is $11.57, considering we're just under $7 now. That's not a bad return, but I know a lot of people want to get 300% in a couple of weeks in this crazy market. 2022 is 14 bucks. Came out evenly. I have no idea why. 2023 is $16.93. 2024, 20 bucks, and uh, 2025, 24 dollars. So that's kind of what I look at. But it's important to look at as well. The current market cap of this company is the same size as Yamaha. If you guys are familiar with that Japanese firm, again, it's already a big market cap company. Now, the other question that I always get a lot is, where can I buy this? If you guys want to invest, not financial advice, but uh, it's up on Binance, Huobi, KuCoin, Gate.io, OKEx, and Crypto.com. And if you are in the US, we recommend crypto.com. And uh, they recently listed Theta and Theta Fuel. So that's where you can buy this if you're interested. It's not widely available on FTX or Coinbase or other exchanges like that for now. Now, the question that also comes up a lot is which is better, Theta or Theta Fuel? So Theta is used for staking and securing the network. Theta Fuel is used to power microtransactions and operations of the network. So Theta has been the better performer than Theta Fuel in the past. Remember, this is not an in indicative of future performance. And also remember, Theta is not inflationary. It's all issued, which is a real plus, and it's rare you see that in this space. But Theta Fuel has 5% inflation. So from that perspective, there'll always be price suppression. Even though they do burn a bit of the Theta Fuel, there will always be price suppression down. Uh, I think the burn is about 1%, inflation is about 5%, so your net growth is 4%. So... That's where that comes from. Let's jump into the conclusions. Now, find out exactly what I buy or not. So video streaming and content delivery is a massive opportunity. No doubt about that. We covered that. And 
Theta is one of the few blockchain solutions focused on this space. Theta offers a unique solution of utilizing this peer-to-peer -peer mesh network to bring faster, cheaper delivery of content that we covered. And it could definitely disrupt the streaming industry. Or it could work alongside the existing streaming industry. So lots of goodness there. But peeling back the tho tokenomics, etc., proves that it's very centralized. And that's a bit of a pain point for me. And in terms of holdings and its network validators, it seems to be owned by the big media companies and all the shares, etc., owned by investors and insiders with very little out there in the marketplace. So the other thing that I like to look at as well, just to give you an idea, um, this is a $120 billion market in the year 2024. So it is a big market. But when I compare it to the markets that I like, like DeFi, that's a $400 trillion market. So I always want you guys to put things in perspective here. And Amazon and Netflix own 75% of this whole streaming market. And then Google own a chunk as well. So I believe they could potentially develop their own. And uh, currently, even if you look at Theta, again, as a benchmark, it has the market cap dimension of Yamaha, and it's about a 30th the size of Netflix. So it's already quite big. Uh, there will be more competition in the space. The question is, does the risk outweigh the upside? There is upside, but I do believe there are faster horses and I did not buy Theta as a result of this analysis. So I might buy it if it goes under six bucks though. So I want to leave that with you guys. That's that would be where my limit order is like $5.50 to $6. I get in, get out of 12, you know, make a 100% return. That's the way I see it. I know there's other YouTubers out there say it's going to $24 before Christmas. Maybe it could. If the market goes completely bonkers, that's entirely possible. But when you look at the number of tokens, $24, that's a huge market cap. Anyway, that's my take. Uh, hope you guys got something from that. I know this is a hugely popular uh, token for me to analyze. And I hope it's good. So let me go and see if there are any questions uh, from you guys out there. And happy Wednesday. I can't believe it's Wednesday already. And I better drink some water because I had... Oh, okay. So I had a notification too. So Zab Judah, how are you? Uh, strange that Facebook and Polkadot partnership last month went under the radar. That's $3 billion in the Polkadot ecosystem. I know it's huge. I... I saw it. I didn't make a big deal of it because I'm not a big Facebook fanboy, but um, I am a very big Polkadot fanboy, and uh, I'm a big believer in that project, and I've been saying for a long time, it's only a matter of time, but where it pounces, I think Polkadot anyway is up 113% since 22nd of June, so it's doing very well. But you're right, we'll start monitoring that as well, as well as the Libra or the DM, whatever their stable coin is. That's getting close to going live, and that will be huge unto itself, too. So there might be a play there, but um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Again, this whole this whole blockchain world is is growing so fast. There's so much to keep an eye on. Tuna's on X-Toast. Hey, it's Joe Face 007 James Bond, how are you? What sources do you use to research so I can help answer the questions in Discord? I seek in alpha. I use a huge amount of sources. In fact, I covered... There was a Sunday Q&A a month or a few months ago where somebody asked me, what do I look at? And I gave a detailed analysis of all my sources. And I, I can uh, I can do a refresher on that on Discord and share it with you. So thank you, Tuna. Bombigi, I did not really like what I researched about Theta. I bought in Terra and more Sol instead. <laughs> Good job. You're smart. So again, it's, it's, it's a brilliant project, brilliant team but it's owned by big media companies. It's completely centralized. There's zero inflation. That's, that's good as well. Uh, but just very little is available to the public. And um, I think there could be faster horses. And I think that a lot of competition is going to come in as well. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Googles of the world and the Amazons of the world and the Netflix of the world are building their own blockchain uh, capability too. Somebody's mother from New Zealand. How are you? With all the splits this year, what do you anticipate? Amazon will announce the same. Um, do you think the, the, the anticipation is already baked into the price? And can you share your DCA targets? So I do like Amazon. I have a new equity shopping list. 
with my price target of when I would accumulate at Amazon. I typically like to get in around 2,900 to 3,000 up to, and get out at 3,500. And I think I covered my price prediction for Amazon this market and out to 2025 last weekend. So I, some, some, sometimes stocks just don't split, but I do expect Amazon and Google to split soon, at least a four for one, three for one, maybe even a two for one, but two for ones aren't even worth it. But I don't think it's priced into stock at all. And what it does is it just helps, uh, particularly options traders get really good returns. So hope that helps. But uh, yeah, we are watching Amazon very carefully. It's in my top 30 targets. Aaron, uh, what is the likelihood that the market has already seen its peak this time? Uh, which market? If you're talking about the stock market, as I've been saying, it's going to crash and it's doing that. So, you know, it's like it's had two nasty days in a row. Huge sell off today with the tapering threat by the end of the year by the Fed. That's the stock market. So I like it when a plan comes together. In terms of crypto, it's interesting because, as I've been saying, this is uncanny. I've been saying there's been a disjoint between equities and Bitcoin, and I believe Bitcoin is the new flight to safety. So even the Palantir news, I know they bought some gold, they expect a black swan and everything else, but at the same time, they're accepting Bitcoin. So they're trying to hedge their bets and get out of fiat. So super interesting. Aaron, thank you for the question. Uh, thanks for your donations as well. Tony D for the animals and serendipity and Rodney Tuddle. You guys are always so generous and I thank you so much. Uh, let's see, more questions coming in. And let me see, Craig Parkin, do you have any idea how listening to you has increased my taxes? You are the best. <laughs> well, Craig, um, this is great to hear, but remember, these are crazy times. So don't expect this all the time. And always take profits. You never, ever go broke paying taxes. So it's a good thing. Uh, just make sure you manage your taxes efficiently as well. Uh, MS, you see Theta has patents and NFT significant. Yes, they have a lot of, uh, they've got two very strong patents that we dug into. Extremely bullish on that. And uh, I know they're playing with NFTs too, and they have some significant partners like one. So I, I love everything that they're doing. I just don't know how much upside there is. So again, I love the project. It's great. It, it checked all our boxes. It's just, it was just heavily centralized and i i have this weird thing in my head where i just prefer projects that are more decentralized because that's the core tenet of this whole blockchain world so um you hope that helps and it is significant again my price prediction is extremely bullish but people are now used to solana type returns it's like okay buy solana 20 bucks it goes to nearly 80 dollars in a couple of weeks it's like that, that that's what people are expecting and it's just not reality so it's it's uh, Theta will run fast, but it's not going to win the race. Um, pinch, Javi. Oh, one other thing as well regarding me. I have a very select stable of horses. I can't, I won't buy 15 or 20 horses. That's just against my philosophy. I'd rather be much more focused. So if there comes a time that, for example, Theta falls under $6, that's when I look at my stable and I have to move one of the horses out before I bring another one in. It's just a very strict philosophy I have. Same thing for equities. Okay, uh, Pinch Javi. Um, I currently have 22% of my portfolio in Polygon. Thinking of selling some to buy Sol as I don't have any thoughts. Well, Polygon is doing great. Polygon will continue to do great. It's, it's, it's popped quite a bit and it's gonna go a lot further, I believe. Um, I think we've seen a huge Again, a huge bounce in Solana. I know it has a lot of weakness today. and But even, uh -huh, this is incredible. I started this and Bitcoin is at 44400 It's just gone up $600. It's because of you all. So thank you all. Um, I know it's been really flat. In fact, uh, in my personal portfolio, I had a little ETH limit order that just filled too, which is great. Anyway, um, let's get back to your question and check out where Matic is right now. And what's gonna happen? So, let me see. I do believe Matic will go straight back to 250. So it's got a 2X from here. Um, are the odds of Matic going, doubling before uh, Solana doubles again? I think so. 
like what's what's going to happen first the way you need to frame this question in your mind is when you do your research will matic go to 250 before solana goes to 150 and the way the way solana is on fire right now and the way the supply is kind of small it's hard to say but i i think um if you are unhappy with your polygon maybe get rid of i always recommend getting rid of a third or a half and moving that into Sol on a dip, and Sol has some crazy dips. So over the last five days, you know, yesterday it could have been purchased in the fi- in fifty seven, fifty eight dollars. So now it's already seventy five, and it's going right back to eighty. But you know, Solana's a new shiny toy that everybody's looking at. Everybody wants to get in on. And what's really interesting about Solana, unlike I better not say the word, but another name out there. It's attracting a lot of institution investment. The same institutions that were buying Ethereum are now buying Solana. So, because you got to remember, the money and the players behind Solana can pick up the phone and call these Wall Street boys and say, "Hey, this is this is one you need to be on." So that's that's what's kind of interesting. Uh, sorry about that long minute answer. Uh, three, three though thoughts in helium. Much love from Australia. So helium and helium mining is incredible extremely lucrative but again when you get a lot of rewards for your mining there's a catch sometimes and i also heard that helium miners are impossible to get you got to wait weeks and weeks sometimes months to get them so uh, it's definitely a good thing to do if you are a miner Uh, in terms of just buying the crypto itself i wouldn't advise it so that's my advice if you're mining it yeah you can print money all day i think it's the second or third most lucrative crypto now to mine carl m james uh, if you would have gotten in at 0.18 theta and 0.018 theta fuel, would you exit these and move into Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, definitely. You're you're making incredible profits, Carl. Uh, congratulations. And I, I do believe there's uh, theta fuel, I definitely think about getting out of, unless you have a utility for it. Uh, and the theta itself, you know, whole part of it, I, I definitely think it's going to double. We'll definitely see twelve to fourteen dollars as a spike, but when I put my price prediction, that's where I see it averaging out over time. So you know this this whole market is extremely volatile, but you might easily be able to double it again. But anyway, when any, when somebody is buying a crypto at ten cents and it goes to ten dollars, take a lot of it off, or even most of it. D- definitely take a couple of times your initial investment off the table. Uh, Nick. Day bought a door runner at Lowe's with Flexa amp when um door runner Lowe's I don't know what da, 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 da. I'm not sure I understand that question Nick you got me confused there um something to do with something buying at a hardware store using Flexa well that's I didn't know Lowe's were accepting that so anyway free lunch if you made large gains in crypto and wanted to diversify a significant portion uh, directly into real estate and didn't have access to traditional credit lines banks would you purchase property with 100 percent cash from those gains yeah there's a few people actually that's um are in that situation where either their credit isn't there or they don't have adequate income or they work for themselves and it's not recognized by the banks i think if you have a lot of gains try go to a small bank or a credit union just have that conversation say hey this is my situation i have bad credit because of this or i have no income because i work for myself but i have lots of assets and work with them negotiate with them the smaller the bank the more you can get but putting a lot of large all cash down on real estate right now during this transition time of the world we have over the next 10 years of fiat debasing and crypto is going to explode I just think it's a shame uh, personally. So I would love for you to be able to get some of that money, even even if you say to the bank, hey, listen, I want to put 40% down or 50% down. They'll give you a loan. When you put a lot of skin in the game, uh, they will put some skin in the game too. So try that. Talk to a small credit union or a small little private bank and they'll help you out. And, but don't put 100% down on real estate. Because remember as well, as it appreciates 15% per year, if you only have 50% down, your return is actually 30% per year. And if you put 10% down, <laughs> your return's like a 150% per year. So think about those numbers all the time as well. And thank you for your donation, Everett Bloom, Trevor L. Band again. Hey, buddy. 
haven't seen you in a while. Thank you so much. Just want to say hi from New Zealand. Awesome. Um, let me see. Howard strikes again. Howard, <laughs> you're too kind. I'm <laughs> well, we're honored. We've got it because it's going to be a whole army of uh, creatures named after you, sir. Thank you. Point uh, zero eight uh, theta hex sucks party on <laughs> bison silver. Um, oh, interesting. Hex sucks party on bison. Yeah, I'll check that out. Thank you, Howard. You're very very kind, Jeeves. Got to find new whale, Howard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, there's a huge. I don't even know how many twenty five ton uh, big blue whale uh, floating around the pacific ocean right now called howard so he's got a little chain a little gold chain and um, jeeves got that thank you everett bloom in a previous video you said to keep track of taxes yourself don't we have to file with an advisor at some point though can we avoid that no i keep track of my buys and sells and the commissions so i can calculate my own taxes and that way i don't have to use a public service and i don't spend so much on my my sales aren't that high and uh, I've been doing this for a long time so I have models built out every time I make an acquisition I document it and I have a big model that calculates it so once you have the system in place it's not hard to do Everett so check it out incognito did you recall what the what the red universe's math book was oh no I didn't um oh I'm gonna call <laughs> I know how to get it Oh, this is this is crazy. Um, Rand book. Um, hang on, because I'm seeing if I can see it on my. Um, bath. Oh, I know where it is. Um, I'm so mad at myself, incognito. I'm going to make a post of the cover on YouTube of that book because uh, I love it. So just watch uh, the community post in YouTube and I'll get it for you. Chad Height, and I must be getting old and I'm completely overloaded with working and research in my brain. My memory isn't as good as it used to be. Chad Height, as a new investor, how can I grow my portfolio large enough to begin options trading without risking my whole bag? Yeah, so if you imagine, like to be able to really play options effectively, you need at least $25,000 of play money. And if you're learning, Again, I always say paper trade, paper trade, paper trade. Try win nine times out of ten first. Start with basics like covered calls and get comfortable. Um, after that, then make sure, like, if, if you need that 25000 between margin and everything else to play with. So that should be no more than 10 or 20% of your entire portfolio that you invest in. So that means if it's 10% ratio, you need at least a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, between 125 to a quarter of a million. So that's very important, Chad, when you think about it. Now, if you're just doing simple covered calls, you can just buy 100 shares or something at 10 bucks and sell a call option out of the money against it. That's easy. You don't need a lot of money to do that type of stuff. But if you're doing things like synthetic longs and stuff, it does take a lot of money. And be very, very careful. Options are very risky. Um, Brian Ellis, I know you say to own your own you say to own your crypto, but I, I do. But if you had a Roth 401k that you need to roll over, would you consider iTrust Capital or the like? Yes. If you have money in an IRA and you're stuck with traditional investment options um, you, and you want to own Bitcoin, then go. That's a good option. But for example, I have a 401k and an IRA and it's all ETH and GBTC. And I got in summer last year. Um, I just converted everything that was in those accounts. Um, not that it's that much, but it turned into quite a bit, actually. Aus Transfer, hold Polkadot, Cardano, or sell for Solana? I have 3x racing Greyhounds rescued for the past years. That's so cool. And they're the kindest, kindest dogs. In fact, we have somebody in our community as well that just rescued a Greyhound, too. So congratulations to you. Um, I definitely, definitely hold Polkadot. And Cardano, again, I, I my target on Cardano is 350 I think it's about $2.20 right now. So let me check uh, where it is. So there's more upside. No, it's $2.14. Um, so I see Cardano definitely going to $3.50. A lot of people are saying it's going to 10 I don't know. 
good for me if it does, uh, just be careful. But if you don't have any Solana, everybody needs to have a little bit of Solana. Like I say, every how you say everybody needs a little bit of Bitcoin, everybody needs a little bit of Ethereum. Now everybody needs a little Solana as well, if you don't have it and you do have crypto. So it's it's a core asset to hold. I still believe even after it's forexed and it's up 3,900% so far this year, it could go a lot further based on relative market caps between Ethereum and Cardano. So that is my take on that. Um, but I would hold the Polkadot. I think Polkadot could, will uh, definitely pop. And there's just so much goodness in that protocol. It just hasn't quite risen to the occasion yet. Okay, uh, Anthony P. Hey James, where would you put 10K right now? ETH at 3K, DOT at 24. Sol if around 60 or other. Yeah, I, I <laughs> they're all good choices actually. I just got a limit order fill on ETH at 3K because I consider, even though cost base is like 200 bucks, I, I know Ethereum is going to 10K, so it's going to 3X. It's... I, and the reason I got so bullish on ETH today is I was looking at the amount of Ethereum on exchanges. The chart is going to... There's going to be no ETH left soon. And that's before the big burn's even happening. So I remain completely bullish on ETH, Solana as well, and Polkadot. I think it's a nice nice selection. So split it up. Go, uh, go buy one ETH, uh, a bunch of DOT, and uh, a bunch of SOL. That'd be a nice mix, Anthony. Yeah, one third, one third, one third. Or take 3K in ETH, not financial advice, of course, but what I would do if I had 10K plain money and I didn't have any of these, uh, put 3K in DOT and 4K on Solana. But wait for that dip to 55 if you can. 55 $56 is a good place to buy Sol. And with the volatility of the market and the weakness in the equity market, it might ding the crypto market a little bit too as well. So thank you for your donation. Tiblusk from South Korea. Good morning to you too. Uh, Kermit, I was so close to swapping my dot for Sol last week. Ooh, yeah, last week was crazy. The whole world is talking about Solana right now. I shouldn't be allowed to talk about it anymore. Um, Bombiggy, look at Terra. In every day, but it's run. I can't chase, so it's against my religion to chase. Um, I got to, me, with investing, I need to get an early and then wait then i'm happy but i any time in my life over the last 31 years i've ever chased something i haven't done well so i stick with my rules gotta be very disciplined in this game and keep keep finding out what works for you and just keep reinforcing it bomb biggie so i'll do that bb uh, how much will this anticipated stock correction affect crypto currently looking to add to both so am i i start a new fifty thousand dollar retire on equities portfolio two days ago, or last week, I can't remember. So that's going to be fun to flesh it out. I've invested $850 so far, the $50,000. Uh, a long way to go, and I'm kind of rubbing my hands together for a little bit of sales. I'd love to see some cheap Amazon, and some cheap Tesla, and some cheap MicroStrategy, and some cheap Teladoc, and I'd love to get my hands on some NVIDIA, all my favorite names, but they're still expensive. Even when the market's crashing today, these things just lost... A little bit. Um, now, I do believe there is a disjoint between crypto and equities, and that's become very apparent. So if you look at today, uh, you know, stock market took an absolute nosedive. And if you look at my little benchmark bellwether Bitcoin, it went up. So it did take a dive too in sympathy with the stock market, but it was very small. They went from 44,800 to 44,400. I was watching it live. And now... With all the goodness from you guys, it's up 500 since I started, or 600. So thank you for all the positive vibes, everybody. And again, it's a volatile beast, but it's only a matter of time before we get to 50K uh, and then off to new all-time highs. Let me see. So BB, thank you for the question. Floor 2 Records. Um, funny how Solana pops after you start talking about it. I told my buddies to get in on that, but they didn't listen. Yeah, a floor two records. I've been trying to convince my network and friends and family to buy Bitcoin until I was blue in the face and uh, they were thought I was completely crazy. And that was 2020. And um, and then they'll wait for it to hit 64 and then they'll call me and then they'll be like, should I get in now? It's like, you know, so 
There are some people that get it. Some people just won't get it. But everybody here listening gets it. They're embracing it. And as George from CryptoZera says, uh, life-changing wealth. Somebody else said a version of that, which was very rude. But um, anyway, Pura Vida, how are you? Jorge, <laughs> I know who you are. Uh, everything you said about options trading was perfect. Been trading since 1985. Covered calls only for the first years. Brilliant, brilliant advice, Jorge. I appreciate that. Start small and with covered calls, get your feet wet. It's really easy. And that's that's how I, I started playing. Uh, I used to hedge currencies. I started doing covered calls and then I got more exotic. But uh, just get that 90% win ratio and then you have life-changing wealth way beyond crypto because then you can make every six to eight to 12 weeks, you can make a ton of money all the time. So uh, think about that, you know, replace your paycheck with covered calls. It's very easy to do, but you need that 25,000 to get started. That's the only hiccup and it's hard. Um, having that initial capital is critical. Once once you have lots of money, it's easy to make money, but getting over that initial hump, I've been able to do life expenses and buy a house. That's the hardest piece. So for many of you out there, if you are making life-changing wealth from getting into a crypto, lock it in, get something that's permanent with it. Like I always say, have a third of your assets being in things like real estate because nobody can ever take that away from you. And that's important. Okay. Um, EC, please help another deserving animal. We will. We are helping tons of animals now at this rate every single week. So really, really appreciate that. You guys are all so kind. In fact, we probably need to hire a full-time person to make all the donations. And uh, we'll do a little... Uh, <coughs> oh, hiccups. Okay, the OC agent. Do you have a new accumulation target for Sol, considering it's already cramped? Yeah, I think buying Sol above 50 to 55, uh, where if between 50 to 50, 55 works right now. But again, it could dip a lot. It has a, had a crazy move. But when I'm looking at the money flowing in and the good news, uh, even at 75, it's very far away. But just 24 hours ago, it was at 58. So be have your finger on the trigger, have the limit orders ready. Even buying at 61 is probably a good deal at this stage because it's going from strength to strength. Stock market's crashing. Crypto it remains strong. And I was very happy to see that because I expected that flight to safety. And now people are beginning to dump their stocks and move into crypto, which is great. Thank you for your donation. Gareth Kimru from Wales. Quality as always, you're the man. I wonder, are you from Wales? Awesome. So uh, Mel R, your AI portfolio tracker is an absolutely brilliant tool to help navigate the crypto investing space. Awesome. Thank you for that. I hope you're getting good value out of it. And uh, a lot of people, they shouldn't have done this, but they've followed uh, that portfolio and it's been mind blowing. Um, but again, got to temper the mood because that type of performance is definitely um, not normal. So the average purchase is up over 92% in seven weeks. And that's just, I don't want people getting used to those types of returns because that's just, <laughs> it's just not normal. Okay, um, thanks Mel. Lima, thoughts on ALBT? I don't even know what that is. Um, again, I tend to be very focused. ALBT, da da da, Alliance Block. Good market cap. Ranked number three hundred. So, I don't. I don't look at things outside the top one hundred. I don't analyze them. I don't have time. Um, total supply. So going to supply. Yeah, it looks very inflationary. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I I can't say anything about it. So Lima, sorry about that. But again, if you are playing with things outside the top one hundred, you're playing with fire. About 95% of the time, you might between one and five of every 100 outside the top 100 are okay and have potential, but the rest is really dangerous. OC agent, I'm now finally in the green on ADA. Would you sell ADA and put it into sell? Uh, so I see, uh, put it this way, I see Solana going to 150. In this bull market, at the very least, it's going to double. 
and I see Cardano going to 350 from where it is today. So um, maybe Solana could even do more. I have theoretical models say I could go to 250. Some even say 750. Um, if the market goes completely bonkers, which can happen. So, uh, yeah. Um, but you never know. If, if Cardano goes to $10, like many people predict, I don't, but many people do, then that would mean Solana has to do... Mm -hmm. has to hit 350 bucks, which is also feasible because I think 250 is very feasible for it. So yeah, it's a tough it's a tough call. I do think um, even from where we are now after Solana going up 4x, I still think it'll run faster than Cardano. Um, so Mr. Burns, when trading view, what trading view indicator can you use to see when Bitcoin floods back into exchanges prior to top of bull market sell-off or is that data only available in Glassnode? So Santiment, Glassnode and Chain Analysis are three services I use and they all have uh, different charts you can access. You can't see a lot of the uh, money flow onto exchanges from TradingView, I'm afraid, but you need those other ones. And when I see big moves, uh, I share them the same day. So Mr. Burns, uh, check it out. And there's a lot of free stuff available, especially I think chain analysis, um, a lot of good uh, stuff you can see. And Glassnode has some free services too, but they're not up to date. So I think you got to pay to see the last two weeks of data. Brett Bradshaw, you mentioned a stock frequently. Is it in it's so I like both and it's very confusing. So NVIDIA, I have been trying to get in. I missed it during the last crash. I had an order and it just missed. And uh, Invite is the biotech personalized medicine play that I do own and I do like and just got more of. So it's beaten down to hell right now but it's a $40 stock. So Brett, hope that helps. And I hope the uh, <laughs> super cheap <laughs> jazz will stop. So um, new, so from NAV, uh, dot AVAX on your regulatory risk spider chart. Yes, they are, and they're all good. I own Avalanche. Avalanche is the least good of the three of them, but I own it for other reasons like speculation reasons. And we saw that over the last couple of days it's been on fire. Polkadot is good all around and Solana is good as well. So Craig Rick, uh, Chainlink or DOT are both. Uh, I think DOT will go faster. Chainlink is the safer play. Um, but uh, yeah, I would definitely go Polkadot. In fact, uh, I'm looking at updating all my price prediction models and tying them back to all the changes that have happened since I did a lot of them over the last couple of months. And I will, I also want to build out a model that shows my price prediction models in my different cases, bearish to bullish and where it is today and where it's come from you know, measuring all time high to all time low to where it is today to my price predictions to see if there's any good timing opportunities out there as well. So Craig, stay tuned for that. And thank you for your donation, Mr. Frosty. Just want to thank you for your dedication and insight. <laughs> You're very welcome. And uh, David Garvin, I'm a Mercy for Animals monthly supporter. Please add to your donations. We will. Uh, we have somebody actually monitoring this and they'll take a note of that. Um, very good. And that's it. Thank you so much, everybody. Got to get back. A lot of stuff to do. Thank you for all the donations. Big thank you to Howard and Bombay Gee and everybody out there. You guys are amazing. Very touching. Good night.